we've got this great equipment from Bailey. We've got a really cool project that's going to test each and every piece of equipment. And we're going to look at the pros and cons of each machine to make a whole bunch of noise. Okay, so this is the uh, working end of the Bailey Power Hammer. I talked to Chris Rush, the designer of this hammer, asked him about these sprockets and chains and, and how it worked, and he told me that this is a DuPont linkage spring that was patented back in 1890 and was used by the DuPont Hammer Company as an iron worker hammer. Bigger spring, bigger everything. But over the years, this DuPont linkage spring has been modified for all different types of uses. And this one is a condensed, packed version of that. This chain is the belting that's found in the yoder. On the yoder ram, the hole that the belting goes through is these, this upper and lower sprocket. This is where the belting's going through, okay? Then the arms come around with the spring. So instead of having a bow spring, this entire mechanism that pivots up here with the spring in the middle is the entire spring, okay? So it's gonna give us the same action as, as the bow spring. We have that sine wave. This also has that same sine wave. It lets it come up and come down as it, as it moves. This moves through the spring. The spring stores energy. It has energy on the stroke down and stroke up. So you have this constant energy, spring energy, just like on the Yoder, okay? It's just more mechanical. This is ran by an electric motor. At the end of the electric motor is an eccentric, and then this arm travels up, comes up here. You can loosen this nut, slide it forward for more stroke, rearward for less stroke. We have a stroke adjustment as just like on the Yoder and we have the action of like a body hammer that it's got that sine wave to it where it just it's got that wave and this is called a DuPont linkage spring. It's been around 130 years. Okay so now that we've talked about the machines we're going to put them through the test. We're going to make a Door skin using the Bailey machine, door skin using the Yoder, and see what see what happens. Okay, so this is our door skin we're gonna reproduce. Um, I'm gonna make it in two pieces. The top, we're gonna split it through the bead. I'm not one of those guys who wants to see if I can make an entire car in one piece of sheet metal. We're gonna make it in two pieces. What I do on my panels is I just put a little, uh, form into it um, so whenever the metal's going through the hammer it don't start flopping around like that so it just kind of spring loads it a little bit that is not shape of any kind this is just a little bit what they call form you got to lubricate your panel so it'll slide through the dies this buck that's on is a 32 to 34 Ford pickup buck it's the correct shape as the roaster pickup. Now this, this panel doesn't have very much shape in it. It's really flat, so it's real easy to overstretch it. But with a power hammer, if you overstretch, you can let it back down just by working the edges. And then I put me a mark at the top of the panel so I know where top is, so I don't get it backwards when I'm hammering and get confused. Okay, so our Panels all cut, lubed up, ready to go. Here we go. So we're gonna do some power hammer. Make some noise. Rock and roll. This uh, one thing I don't like about the machine is when I let off the pedal, I want it to stop instantly. What it does is when you let off the pedal with all the electronic, with the electrical control, it has to slow down. So if I'm in here trying to work a low spot 
and I raise it up and I let off the gas and this thing's still going up and down, then I stretch everything, I stretch it more than I want to. So I'm going to increase the stroke because uh, it's not really hitting hard enough to move the metal as fast as I want it to. Make sure it's tight. We're getting there. Obviously it needs some more in the middle. It's not laying flat on the buck here. Touching in the middle. Look at it see. But it's definitely right here in the center. So we'll work the center and, and blend out. I'm uh, adjusting the stroke to the max stroke because I want it to hit a little harder. Uh, the machine's walking around a little bit because um, I've got it set on the maximum hit. And that's where the weight of the yoder comes in. The weight helps keep it in place. Well, the cool thing about the machine moving around is I don't have to walk very far to the buck. But look, hey, we're getting our shape in our panel, starting to lay on the buck, a little tuning up. Need some right through here, right through here, a little bit right here. That is real close, real close. No low spots, no high spots. So there we go. Um, that's our door skin, main door skin section. Done on the Bailey hammer. I started using my Yoder, it wasn't plug in and go. I had things I had to deal with. So it's a simple idea, simple thing. You know, we've got to, we've got to get it where it won't walk around. Um, got to go back and tighten up all the bolts. Things is, the reason it walks around is because of weight. weight. Weight in these machines is very, very important. Um, the heavier it is, um, the less likely it is to walk around. And the weight of the machine absorbs any of the shock. You know, it just transfers into the machine. So, but, but the results are really nice. So, so now um, I'm gonna shape one on the Yoder. You'll be able to see the difference in the way the machine hits and everything, but the results are going to be pretty much the same. Yeah.